This video was made possible by the support of my patrons. It goes into the details of a tragic, fatal, and ultimately avoidable shooting. Viewer discretion is advised. On March 3rd, 2022, a San Diego deputy enters the fifth floor of a condominium located near downtown. Deputy Jason Bunch is on the scene to provide an eviction notice to a 47-year-old Asian woman, Yan Li. It's important to note that this is not an eviction, only a notice, meaning that once the deputy hands her the paper, his job is done. Her eviction is scheduled for a later date. Lee opens the door and the officer confirms her identity and hands her the eviction notice. At that moment, he sees Yan Lee is holding a large kitchen knife. Are you Yan Lee? Uh, yes. Okay, here's a notice to evict. Okay. To what? Here's your notice for. Put the knife down right now or I'm gonna f. Put your knife down. Put the f knife down. You don't put, put it the knife down right now. You don't put, it down. put the knife down right now. How do I know that I'm an intruder? 15 out of 5, 1 at gunpoint. Code cover. Put the gun down, ma'am. I'm gonna no, shoot you. Put the f gun down. How do I know Put the gun down. down. Bunch continues ordering Lee to put the knife down. Lee responds that she's not afraid and that she's not going to come after him. She accuses him of being a fake police officer, and the exchange continues before she ultimately shuts the door. Put down the knife right now. Put down the knife right now. Ma'am, you will be shot. Do you understand that? Put down the gun or you will be shot. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. Ma'am, drop the knife. Why is your badge? You will be shot. Do you understand? Where that? is your badge? Ma'am, drop the knife. You have another image of your badge. Don't. Are you a poor guy? Don't, just drop the knife. Where don't is your badge? Drop the knife, please. Don't make no, me I do this. No, I have not dropped it. Drop Where is your badge? the knife now. Hey, I am a fake police officer. I am not a fake police it's officer. Funny, it's drop, funny. drop the knife. Drop the. The moment Yan Lee closes the door, it seems Bunch kicks the door and manages to keep it open for a brief moment before Lee closes it shut. It's not clear from the video what exactly happened, but at the very least, his intention to prevent Lee from closing it as he runs towards the door is obvious. So what's the situation so far? The deputy served an eviction notice to a tenant who was armed with a large kitchen knife. I'm not a lawyer, but from my understanding, you can be armed with a knife in your own home. We see Lee never moves towards the officer, she never threatens the officer, and she never waves or moves the knife menacingly towards him. Once the deputy points his gun at her, she keeps her arm with the paperwork outstretched and pulls the knife closer to her body in a defensive stance. She offers to explain herself, saying, How and later assured the officer she wasn't going to approach him. Do you understand that? I'm gonna come back. Okay, I will. It's most clear she had no intention of harming Deputy Bunch when she did the most de-escalatory thing possible by ending the interaction and closing the door. Which, again, is her right. The deputy's legal duty here is just to deliver the paperwork and go home. Ending things here would be the smartest and everyone gets to live another day. Unfortunately, this isn't what Deputy Bunch chose to do. The officer instead called for backup. 15 out of 5, she's barricaded in 503. Now, at the moment, this really just seems like needless escalation by an officer who's clearly not received enough training and is hyped up on adrenaline and fear. He mixes up a knife with a gun multiple times. Put the gun down, ma'am. I'm gonna no, shoot you. Not. Put the f gun down. Put the gun down or I will shoot you! One moment that I think really reveals the mindset of the deputy here is this. You poor guy! Drop, just drop the knife. Where Don't is the drop the knife, please. Don't make no, me do I this. No, no, I like, if he were to shoot and kill Yan Li, it wouldn't be of his own volition, as if she were pulling the trigger to her own murder. When he has a gun and she has a knife, and if he ever felt in danger, the reasonable thing to do would be to create distance with the person with the knife, not run at her door. 
you can really see how inadequate the police training is when the immediate response to someone holding a knife is pointing your gun at them and barking orders. No attempt at a dialogue, just immediately start screaming at the top of your lungs. If the person who's in their own home and as far as we know hasn't committed any crimes refuses to submit, it's like the officer ran out of options in the dialogue tree, you know what I mean? It's like his brain just shut off and he was on autopilot. His training starts and stops at bark orders, shoot if they don't comply. Now the sheriff's department justifies Bunch's decision as a de-escalatory measure. We see 8 minutes after the previous clip ends that his supervisor arrives and they try to quote unquote de-escalate the situation by talking to Lee through a closed door. Deputies try to convince Lee to cooperate. The department does not elaborate further, considering the service is over, it's not clear what they're trying to get Lee to cooperate with. Okay. Hey, this is the Sheriff's Department with the San Diego Police Department, we're both here. I need you to put the knife down and open the door. Kevin LaChapelle, a former San Diego police officer, defended the actions of the officers, stating that the one thing that I can think of would be after she closes the door, it would be nice to be able to call maybe a PERT team, you know, to call somebody that maybe is more skilled at dealing with somebody that's upset. But again, you have to weigh that on, on the inside of that door is she now stabbing herself because of the frustration and then the deputy is going to be responsible for not taking action. Uh, to make sure she's not harming herself. But I think this response is disingenuous. This was an eviction notice, not a wellness check. As LA-based civil rights attorney John Carpenter stated, the deputy's job was done. He's a process server. You serve the process and then leave. If the police really were worried about her well-being or just wanted to open an investigation after what happened, okay. Having a psychiatric crisis team wouldn't be nice as La Chapelle put it, it should be essential to dealing with people in distress. It's impossible to peer into the mind of Yan Li in her final few hours, but her believing that Deputy Bunch was a fake police officer is a potential sign of a mental health crisis. Weeks after the fatal events of this day, it was revealed that Yan Li was actually Dr. Yan Li. In an open letter, her former colleagues at the Yale School of Public Health wrote, that Dr. Yan Li was a talented scientist who received her doctorate in biostatistics, winning one of our most prestigious student awards. The 47-year-old scientist was also the mother of a UC Berkeley student. In the eyes of her former colleagues, who all work in public health, it is evident from our perspective that Dr. Li, facing eviction, was in a state of crisis when she opened her door to a deputy serving the notice. Dr. Lee expressed doubt as to the authenticity of the law enforcement officer. The officer responded by swearing and shouting, likely validating, in Dr. Lee's perspective, the threat to her welfare. The deputy's aggressive attitude towards Dr. Lee, his attempt to get inside of her apartment, and then the police's further effort to negotiate with her likely agitated her state of crisis and potentially validated her paranoia. Of course, only mental health professionals can make the evaluation here. Neither me nor the police are qualified to make any sort of assessment as to her mental well-being or mental state, which is why a crisis team was essential. The open letter summarizes why best. Efforts were made to talk to Dr. Lee, but without any of the benefit or subtlety or nuance that mental health professionals are trained to deploy. The pieces were now in place for a disaster. Sometime after Bunch's supervisor tried to talk to Dr. Lee, everything changed. The sheriff's department alleges that the deputies were told by employees of the complex that Dr. Lee had threatened the manager and a maintenance worker with a knife the previous day. This footage was not released for the public to see and the details of this incident aren't known, so it remains to be seen whether this piece of verbal crack was sprinkled on by the police, or if it actually happened. Judging by Dr. Lee's behavior, I mean, it's plausible, but regardless of whether it was true or not, they now had a probable cause to arrest Dr. Lee and enter her home if necessary, on the basis that she was a threat to public safety. 
In a conference after the events of the night, SDPD Lieutenant Matt Dobbs stated that the officers were waiting for more resources before entering Dr. Lee's home, and they began entry once they had sufficient resources. When they had all of the proper, uh, appropriate resources, they opened the front door to the, to the apartment to make contact with a female. When a reporter asked whether the psychiatric emergency response team was a part of those resources, Dobbs had this to say. The, they had uh, less lethal options there. They had contacted PERT regarding the female. Um, as far as what role those uh, resources played, I don't know though. It's unclear why the only resources considered necessary were a canine unit and less lethal munitions and not a crisis team, but so it was deemed. The next clip begins about 40 minutes later, after what the sheriffs allege were a series of failed attempts at getting Dr. Lee to comply and come out without the knife. So San Diego officers began their entry to disarm her without anyone there trained to handle this exact kind of situation. The first deputies that enter are equipped with less lethal weapons and we see Dr. Lee standing beside her bedroom door, still holding the knife. The officers shoot less lethal rounds first, but they're ineffective. Suddenly, she begins charging the officers. It's moments like these where you wish you could look into someone's mind to see what they were thinking. Did Dr. Lee genuinely believe these were fake cops? Did she fear for her life? Did she just have enough? We'll never know. Dr. Lee charges forward and chaos ensues. The police begin falling over each other as she manages to injure one in the chest. Three officers fire multiple shots and she falls face down. Dr. Yan Li was pronounced dead at the scene. The video of Dr. Li's murder has over half a million views on YouTube, and the comment section, unsurprisingly, is filled with the usual police apologists who are blaming her for her own murder. Hey, uh, editing Daniel here. So I didn't notice this when I first posted, or I don't know if the comments have kind of changed, but there's a lot of comments against the cops, both because of their tactical failures and just the needless escalation, which is pretty awesome. You usually don't get that in mainstream cop stories. Uh, that goes very much against the headlines and how this was portrayed in the media, but it's nice to see people have common sense. So yeah. These commenters aren't alone either. The sheriff's investigation into the shooting is still ongoing, but it's likely to be ruled legally justified. When faced with a choice to surrender, Dr. Lee did, after all, use lethal force against the police. So none of the three officers who shot her are likely to face any sort of repercussions. But legally justifiable doesn't mean the shooting was just. And if the events of this day were ruled legal, then it's clear the law needs to change. John Carpenter puts it eloquently in his interview with the San Diego Tribune. This is just a classic example of unnecessary escalation of a conflict resulting in a lawful shooting. This video showed me a woman in crisis who was losing her home and who was being aggravated by the situation unnecessarily by law enforcement. So my one question to the San Diego Police Department here is, why the rush? As Carpenter points out, they only learned of the previous threat Lee had made to the maintenance workers after the initial processing of the eviction notice. They hadn't gone there to investigate an ongoing call for an assault with a knife. That's information they learned after the service of the police was complete. As far as we know, neither the managers nor the maintenance workers felt it was important enough to even report it to the police. They only did so when they saw police were already standing in her front door. But this is all of a sudden now justification used to not only arrest her, but break and enter within one hour of the initial eviction notice? Why the rush to enter? Where's not only the psychiatric team, but where's the negotiation specialist? Where's SWAT even, who specialize in arresting barricaded suspects? 
All we got are a poorly trained group of cops equipped with lethal, less lethal weapons, and a canine unit, all crowding around the door rushing to get inside up close with a distressed woman wielding a knife. Shocker, the situation got three officers a legal kill. It blows my mind how in every step of the way this department has absolutely fucked this up. And it leaves me with only one answer. They rushed in because they don't value human life. They don't see the preservation of human life as essential to their job duties. The worst cops actively enjoy taking lives. Look at this guy leering from the side like if he's sitting at home watching Netflix. Unsurprisingly, he's one of the one who shoots Yan Lee. But aside from those, it's clear the department just sees occasional murders as an unfortunate inevitability of police work. Not the primary effect of police escalation, but an unavoidable tragedy. Not the last option, but the default option. In their open letter, Dr. Lee's colleagues emphasize the need to embed public health within law enforcement. Dr. Lee's killing suggests to us the need for both better non-lethal crisis intervention training for law enforcement officers and for embedded staff specializing in mental health and social services to assist officers in de-escalating crises and avoiding tragic deaths. The public health approach to policing might have made this avoidable, but it would be a mistake to stop there. I think it's important to highlight the murder of Dr. Yan Lee because of the banality of it all. The police didn't display gruesome brutality as they did when murdering George Floyd, or the gross incompetence when shooting Breonna Taylor. Dr. Yan Lee was an imperfect victim. As the NY Post put it, an unhinged woman who attacked the police and got killed. The murder seems almost routine. Despite some brief coverage, the events of March 3rd are likely to be forgotten. But it's these exact cases that I think deserve our attention, because they reveal the deep disregard that runs deep within police departments. There's no great villain that can get thrown under the bus here like Derek Chauvin. This is the system working as intended, with an absolute callousness and lack of care for human life that can turn a routine eviction notice into a legal kill. There is a deep embedded rot that I don't think can really be dealt with through piecemeal reform. And until we get massive sweeping changes that shape the totality of policing, this will happen again. On March 3rd, 2022, Dr. Yan Lee was legally murdered. She leaves behind family and friends and will absolutely leave a scar on the San Diego community a permanent reminder that her death was the result of a police force that does not value human life. For how routine the shooting was, Dr. Lee is unique as a victim. Most victims of police violence are young men, with black men at the top of the list and Hispanic men shortly behind. Asian isn't even a category in the Washington Post police killing tracker. Police brutality is not equal opportunity, but it does affect everybody. San Diego has the most expensive housing market in all of the United States and has placed sixth highest in rental increases. As cities across the country become more unaffordable, more people from all backgrounds are inevitably going to brush up against law enforcement and some won't make it out of the other end alive. I know this isn't the usual kind of video on this channel, I mean we could go into the long history of how this became our status quo, but that wouldn't be helpful in understanding the moment to moment decisions that result in the murder of people like Dr. Yan Lee. The escalatory actions of not only the San Diego Police Department, but the police all over the United States make murder not only inevitable, but legally justified. Thank you for watching.